Welcome to episode one of Caucus Live, brought to you by the Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus. I'm your host, Sarah Houtman. Today we're talking about the Minnesota Permit to Purchase. Our guests today are Craig Burris of Tactical Training Solutions and Baron Jewell of Jewell Labs. Together we'll walk through the basics of what you need to know to buy a gun in Minnesota. When do you need a permit to purchase, and how do you get one? What's it like buying a gun in a gun shop, and what do you need to know before you go? Stick around to find out. Welcome to the first episode of Caucus Live by the Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus. So first off, just a little housekeeping. Caucus Live is a new educational series we're doing. We want to put good, reliable information out into the world. And if you're new to guns, we're going to cover a variety of topics that'll help get you started right. But even if you're already an experienced gun owner, stick around because we're actually going to do some really deep dives on these topics. And you might see something new or you might learn something that helps you then turn around and teach others. If you find these episodes helpful, please share them with your friends and your family. Um, I know right now we've got a ton of new people entering the gun community, and we want to welcome them and help them get started on the right path. As we go along, please drop your questions in the comments, and we'll get to as many of them as possible on the air. Our guests today are Craig Burris and Baron Jewell. Craig will be talking about the legal requirements to buy a gun in Minnesota. Craig, can you tell us a little about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Sarah. Um, before I do that, I just want to stop and say thank you to you and everybody at the Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus for everything that you do uh, in relation to gun rights in the state. Uh, it's been a huge help, and we wouldn't be where we are with uh, without you and the Gun Owners Caucus. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so about me, I, uh, I run Tactical Training Solutions. Uh, we're a firearms training company. Uh, from a volume standpoint, we mainly do permit to carry, but we also uh, teach defensive pistol as well as defensive rifle training. Um, and I've been doing it for about the last 15 years. All right, thanks very much. And we'll also be talking to Baron Jewell about the experience of buying a gun at a retail store and how to prepare for a smooth transaction. So t tell us a little bit about yourself, Baron. Hey everybody! So excited to be here. Uh, I'm I'm right now just a gun counter jockey guy. Um, Jewel Labs is my own company, but uh, my full time job is working at Arts and Arms uh, down in Eden Prairie. For the purposes of this uh, conversation, though, um, I'm trying to speak to uh, the community at large, not just my shop. So uh, I'm Jewel Labs for today, but yeah, that's that's my full time gig is selling guns and. Uh, a little bit of part-time helping people learn how to shoot them. Oh, good deal. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys, for being here. All right. Uh, let's get into the main topic. So we'll start with Craig. Craig, what do we need to know to buy a gun in Minnesota? Well, I think the first thing is is to start off with that uh, a lot of people found this out recently with uh, some of the things that we've been dealing with, that it's actually a little bit more difficult to buy a gun in Minnesota than a lot of people thought based on maybe what they saw in the news. So the basics of buying a firearm in Minnesota are that if it's not a deer hunting rifle or shotgun for hunting, um, you're probably gonna need a permit to purchase or a permit to carry. So within Minnesota, we have a permitting system uh, for pistols and for what are classified as uh, quote unquote assault weapons. Um, that definition is fairly broad uh, to mean pretty much any semi-automatic uh, firearm with a few different features like adjustable stocks or a bayonet lug or a threaded barrel. Gotcha. 
Okay. So basically, you need a permit to purchase for anything except for, like, say, like a bolt action rifle, something like that. Exactly. Um, what about as far as the? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, what about uh, a lot of people recommend shotguns for home defense? Would you need a permit to purchase for a shotgun? Uh, not if that shotgun uh, didn't fall under the assault weapons definition. So if it had a capacity of five rounds or less, um, if it was a pump action shotgun, didn't have a detachable magazine or an adjustable stock, those types of things. Kind of your average, what you think of as like your grandpa's shotgun, you wouldn't need a permit to purchase for that. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so we've kind of covered what kind of guns require uh, the permit. Um, so what kind of transaction requires a permit to purchase? Because not all transactions require it, right? Exactly. So if you were to, uh, let's say, if I were to loan you a gun for the day so you could go shooting, that wouldn't require a, a permit to purchase. Um, if I were to receive a gun as a gift, that wouldn't require a permit to purchase uh, either. Or if I were to, as friends, sell you a firearm, that wouldn't require a permit to purchase. Now that said, uh, the private transactions for many firearms, uh, the sellers do want to see a permit to purchase or permit to carry because there is a legal requirement that I not sell a firearm to someone who I know or should know is a prohibited person. Um, and the only way I can realistically know that is if uh, either I have a background check done on you or I see a permit to carry or permit to purchase. Gotcha. Okay, so that's just kind of doing your, your due diligence um, and with a transaction with somebody that you don't already know. Exactly. Right. But as okay. far as giving a gift to a, a son, daughter, grandson, friend, um, those wouldn't require a permit to purchase. Only if you actually purchase the, uh, the firearm from a, uh, a federal firearms licensee. So what you think of as your average gun shop or gun range. Okay. So say you decide to buy a gun. How do you go about getting the permit to purchase? Yeah, the process is fairly straightforward. Um, it's a little bit more convoluted now with uh, with uh, the pandemic that we're currently dealing with. Uh, but most police departments have uh, have been fairly uh, accommodating. Uh, so basically, what you would do is you fill out an application um, with some basic information about who you are, uh, where you live, things of that nature. Um, you turn that into your chief law enforcement officer. For most people, that ends up being uh, going to your police station to apply. Um, and when you do that, uh, they've got seven days to uh, run a background check on you, make sure that you're not a prohibited person and that you can legally own a firearm. Uh, and if that's the case, they will mail you a permit to purchase that's valid for one year. And the permit to purchase is free in the state of Minnesota. Uh, that was just about to be my next question is, does it cost anything? So it is free, you're saying? Yeah, so for the permit to purchase, it is free, um, and that's great because it really gives uh, people of all income levels access to uh, to be able to get the tools they need to defend themselves. Right, okay. And what if you live in a smaller town and you don't have a police station in your town? Yeah, so if you don't have a police station, generally you're going to go to your, your county sheriff uh, to get that permit to purchase. Um, so if you are in, uh, you know, in more of a rural area or not in an actual city, um, you would go to your county sheriff and you could do the same permit to purchase because they would be the chief law enforcement officer in that area. Okay. Yeah, and then, you know, another thing I've, I've heard is that a lot of departments have gone to appointment only uh, for permit to purchase and, and also permit to carry, which we'll cover in a later episode, uh, just due to the COVID considerations, uh, trying to, you know, keep everybody socially distanced. So that's uh, <laughs> the goal there. Um, we are asking people, though, if you, if you do apply for a permit to purchase and you're given an excessively long wait time for an appointment, just uh, please let us know at the Gun Owners Caucus because that's something we're monitoring. Absolutely. And I think in addition to that, you know, a lot of, you know, this is something you can work with your, your local police department on. I know, um, so I live in Lakeville and our police department uh, is, is trying to do their best to keep social distance. Um, and they've actually gone to uh, an email system where you email in the application, a copy of your driver's license. Um, they'll process the application. There is no legal requirement for you to do it in person uh, like there is for a permit to carry. Um, so if, if you're finding, I think, that you have those problems, uh, like Sarah said, contact the Minnesota gun owners um, and, and talk to your police department and, and see if maybe they could do it a different way. That's good advice, yeah. And looks like we've got a question from the audience here from Paul Lathrop. Uh, is the Minnesota permit to purchase or permit to carry shall issue? 
Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. So uh, shell issue generally refers uh, to talking about a permit to carry. Um, and the main difference there is um, in some states, say like California, when you go to apply for a permit to carry, um, there's no legal requirement for the government to give that to you. Um, in Minnesota, we are a shall issue state as it relates to permit to carry. Um, and what that really means is that, uh, that when you go to apply, essentially, if you're legally able to own a gun and you've gone through the proper training, you can get a permit to carry. As far as permit to purchase, that would kind of fall under the same category of, of shall issue, uh, which is uh, the uh, police department or sheriff would have to prove that you were uh, someone who was prohibited from owning a firearm to deny you the permit to be able to purchase a firearm. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And it looks like we've got a comment here I'll put up real quick uh, from the Gun Owners Caucus itself. And uh, that one just says, if your police department is not processing permits to purchase, uh, there's an email there. It's contact at gunowners.mn. And we'll just check and see if we have any other uh, questions or comments here from the audience. All right. And uh, if you want to say where you're watching from, too, we're always curious about that. All right. And we'll just give it another second to see if there's any other questions. Uh, before we go to break, uh, I just want to give a special thanks to Filster Holsters uh, for sponsoring this, this uh, first episode. Uh, Filster has donated the production software that we're using and also some production equipment and is providing production assistance. So thank you very much, Filster Holsters at filsterholsters.com. And we'll take a quick break here. And if you've got any questions, put them in the comments and we will get to them after the break. Hi, it's Brian Strauser, chairman of the Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus. We are a single issue, nonpartisan Second Amendment advocacy group. Our mission is to protect and advance the right of citizens to keep and bear arms. We believe that law-abiding citizens should be able to own and use firearms for all lawful purposes, including self-defense, competition, hunting, and the shooting sports. Please consider joining us as a Second Amendment defender with support as low as $5 a month, or choose one of our other annual membership options. You can learn more about us at gunowners.mn and become a member at gunowners.mn slash join. All right, and we are back with Craig Burris from Tactical Training Solutions, and we're talking about the Minnesota permit to purchase. All right, and I'm not seeing any additional questions from the audience here, uh, so I think what we'll do... Uh, I think we covered everything, really. All right. Well, yeah, I think so. It's a, it's a fairly straightforward process. Yeah, it's pretty easy. So it's just kind of uh, a matter of being prepared and not being surprised when you get to the gun shop and <laughs> realize that you don't have what you need. And speaking of which, uh, next we're going to be talking to Baron Jewel. So Baron's going to tell us a little bit about the retail experience. So Baron, as you mentioned, worked as a sales consultant and marketing assistant at Arms and Arms. So yeah, I know I for some, what was that? <laughs> oh, I thought you said something there. <laughs> uh, so for some people going into a gun shop for the first time is a little bit intimidating. So what I'd like to know is what's it like buying a gun in a retail shop? So like starting with when you walk in, what do you see? So on that, we, we, I have had a, a couple, not not a lot, but I've had a couple of people come up to the door and they'll like just just crack it and peek in, like, can, can I come in here? Like, <laughs> it's especially if you're like new to guns and you have nobody around you that already had, had does anything in guns. I can understand, like, it, it can be intimidating. Um, you know, it's it's this kind of maybe probably scary thing to do, right? Um, but really, retail. Remember, we're we're still a retail space, right? Um, we still have goods that we're trying to sell. Um, we're still trying to interact with our customers, um, and I don't want to just sell you something. I, I genuinely want to have an interaction with you um, and help build that relationship because we are trying to help you get the best tool to fit your needs. Um, you know, buying a gun is somewhere between buying a TV and buying a car. Um, 
you know, it won't it won't take as long and it doesn't have to be as complicated as buying a car, uh, but it's not quite walk in and swipe your card for the new Samsung. So, uh, yeah, when you when you come in, um, you know, like like any other uh, widget uh, category in your retail spaces, um, you're going to have varying uh, environments that you're going to go into. You know, and each, each shop is probably going to have a little bit of different focus and a little bit different. Uh, retail personality just just based on the people that work there who owns it who runs it um you know the shop i happen to work at uh you know the the owners were very focused on making a open environment that was well lit um that was staffed with friendly people that like that's our focus so you know when when you come in when you go into a store like don't no, nobody's going to tell you to get out for walking in the door um, you know, come in, find an associate, wait for an associate to approach you. Um, you, you know, it's, it's like shopping anywhere else, honestly. Yeah. I remember the first time I walked into a gun store and I was, I was like a little bit overwhelmed and I kind of knew what I wanted already, but I, I was very hesitant about the whole retail experience just because I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but yeah, it was actually, it was easier than I thought in some ways. Um, and the people that helped me were awesome so i mean i was i was pretty lucky there um but i think it's good for people to know that they can shop around and they can find a shop that has an environment that's to their liking yep absolutely um and you know i would tell people who have uh people in your sphere that are already gun owners that have a shop that they they like um yeah, like honestly try that one first wherever it may be because if if you if it's a friend or if it's somebody you you already mesh with and they like the store um there's a chance that you'll like whatever the personality of that store is um so it'll, it'll be an easier transition or if you do have that person ask them to take you there um you know it'd be a, a lot easier transition if you're not just walking in by yourself um you know if you already have somebody that's comfortable in the environment that can show you around can kind of give you a little bit of the etiquette because there's a little bit of in-store etiquette um, like anywhere else, right? Um, just some of those nuances for the for this particular industry. Um, you know, that would, that would make the initial experience a lot less stressful. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's bring a friend. That's definitely good advice. And uh, a lot of the, the gun etiquette stuff that um, that you mentioned, I think, is is largely under the area of gun safety. So it's like not pointing guns at people and, and stuff like that. And actually, if you tune in uh, next week, we're going to do our next episode on Wednesday, July 22nd at 7 p.m. And the topic of that one is going to be gun safety. So we're going to teach you what you need to know to be safe. Uh, you can apply that at home. You can apply that when you're in the gun store shopping for your first gun. Uh, and it's it's really good background information to have, just so you kind of feel prepared for the experience. Um, so that leads me to another question, though. Do you need to know all about guns before you go, or can you kind of browse? No, you can absolutely come in and browse. Um, you know, especially since, well, <laughs> normally, my shelves are kind of empty right now, but normally um, you can go in and we'll have... I mean, pick a category. We'll probably have a dozen options in that category and another dozen that are a degree one way or the other from what you're looking at. Um, you know, so there's, there's a lot to look at. Um, and yeah, there's, you, I mean, you know, I, this is genuinely all I do professionally. Like most of my professional value is gun stuff and I'm still learning stuff daily uh, about guns. Um, you know, and I'm working on, I don't know, I guess 10 years doing like actually like seriously interested in gun stuff. Um, there's just a lot to learn. I mean, I have gone, I went to college for gunsmithing and there's still stuff I learned. So um, coming in and, you know, being, you know, being open to just hearing what the salesman has to say, um, you know, salesmen like, like anywhere else are going to be varying degrees of subject matter experts. Um, you know, take, take what they say with, consider it some, give it, you know, take it with some, a grain of salt and, you know, maybe just find out what their background is. Right. Um, you know, my, 
my background happens to be a lot of military and competition shooting stuff. Uh, if you come in and ask about a hunting shotgun, I'm going to hand you off to another one of the salesmen because that's just not what I do. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, um, yeah, absolutely. Come in, be willing to ask questions. Uh, there's, there's a lot of information you can find on the Internet. There's a lot of information to sort through on the Internet. So, right. you know, maybe balance some of that against what you hear from somebody in person. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, absolutely come in, ask questions. I don't know a gun guy that won't want to talk to you about gun stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the cool thing about guns uh, in the gun community in particular is that it is a lifelong learning experience, but everybody's so happy to have new people in the sport that they're yeah. very, very welcoming. And uh, it's it's really something special. So that's a good thing, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So what if you like the looks of a gun, but you don't really know how it works? Then what? So that's something, you know, the, uh, the salesman, at least talking to all of our sales staff, um, we are happy to give you a rundown on how it works, how to disassemble it, a quick tutorial on how to clean it, use it, whatnot. Um, but part of that is you got to remember, like, unless you go to someplace with a range that offers training, the salesman also isn't an instructor. Um, and they might not really be qualified to, like, actually instruct. Um, they might, you know, be able to give you the, the rough outline. But, you know, it's it's something where that's, you know, maybe something you go back, you get in touch with Craig. Um, our store happens to have a dude on staff that does have his own company doing training. I've been helping him. Uh, if you go to any of the retail spaces that also have a range, uh, all of them have instructors there. And it, I, I really encourage people, especially if you're new, but even if you're not, um, go pay for a class. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't need to be a super two day class that you have to travel somewhere to uh, even a couple hour intro class at one of the ranges um, or if you know if you're down at Fort and Hunt or wherever it, it gets you started and that will help give you a good foundation of where to go or it should um, you know a good instructor should give you an idea of like where to build to right because shooting mm -hmm. um, and guns that i mean that's the american martial art right, really right, so right. you know it's with that being a martial art it's a lifelong thing um and you don't have to be the the hyper committed person that goes every night to practice it um you know if you want to do it casually do it casually but you know get some training and learn how to use it yeah absolutely and episode four of caucus live that's upcoming uh, that's actually going to be about how to find a good instructor. Um, so I'm looking for the date for that, but I'll, I'll put it in the comments at the end. Um, so we will be doing an episode, uh, which will be a panel discussion on how do you find a good instructor? How do you tell if they're good or not so much? Uh, and how can you kind of be prepared for the learning experience as a new gun, uh, new gun owner, or uh, even someone who's not new, but it wants to advance their skills. So that'll be coming up. Awesome. Uh, now, is there anything t that you think, um, coming back to the, the retail gun experience, um, what can people do to prepare for a good experience? So first, first thing, if you have the intend to buy, um, come in with your permit to purchase or permit to carry already if you think you're going to need it for whatever you're looking at. Um, you know, that, that right there, because if, if you come in and you want to buy a handgun, but you don't have a permit to purchase, well, I can, I can show them to you, but I, I can't sell them to you. Um, and honestly, right now at, at, at this point, if, if you like one today, it's probably going to be gone tomorrow. Um, yeah, there's not, definitely not been a... there. Just that's the nature of the beast <laughs> right now. So, right. There's definitely a lot of increased volume. Oh man. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so coming with that first, uh, second, if it, you don't have to know like what you want, but have an idea of what you want it to do, you know, just so that way it helps me guide what you're, you're looking for. 
because you know the, the, it's not the customer's job to know everything that is on the market that fits their needs. That's that's what I do, right? I'm mm-hmm. I'm there to know what everybody makes so that I can show them to you and give you an idea of what might fit you best. But having that that outline, um, you know, the, those lateral limits, so that I know, okay, I'm he's looking for or she's looking for a a handgun for home defense. You know, that's been a super popular one right now. Well, I, I, you know, I've got my Rolodex of what I think personally fits that role well. Um, And I'm going to show those to you. And from there, you know, you can tell me I I like these features. I don't like these features. Um, Maybe I want uh, something a little bit more this direction, you know, and then that that helps me guide the conversation because that's really what we're having. Um, I am trying to have a conversation that guides you to the tool that best fits what works for you, right? Um, right? You know, I'm not just trying to sell something. Right, right. So you don't have to come in and say, okay, I'm looking for uh, Smith & Wesson M&P Pro Series 5-inch barrel, uh, you know, su- suppressor height sights. You don't need to know all that necessarily going in, although you can, and, you know, it's never a bad thing to do your research, but... So you're saying at least know what you want to do. Yeah, exactly. And if there's something already like you, you've been shooting with a friend or, you know, you, you feel confident in the research you've done and you come in and you're like, I want to buy that. You're like, cool, let's buy that. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to try and talk anybody out of anything either. So. Right. Okay. All right. And then you already, you already covered my next question. So what people should bring with them is uh, apply for your permit to purchase ahead of time and bring that with you when you come in. Because otherwise you'll get to the store, you'll find something you really like and you can't buy it, sorry. Yep. (laughs) Right, so okay, so have that done. Um, Is there anything else that you wish more people knew before they came in? Um, Understand, especially right now, just within the dramatic increase in volume, um, and I, particularly it seems for first time gun buyers, there is a chance that you're going to get delayed on the background check that we have to run in the store um, through the National Instance Check System. Uh, one right now, uh, for it seems for new buyers, it's about a 20 minute wait to get that instant check back. Um, <laughs> instant. <laughs> and, yes, instant. Um, All right. But then it's it's been pretty common to see delays. And all a delay means is that I don't get to send the gun home with you today. Uh, gotcha. They do not tell me why. All I see is a yellow bar that says delay. That's it. Okay. So um, I get no information beyond that. The odds of me ever learning anything about that are almost zero unless the customer reaches out to uh, the ATF and tries to find out why. If that's something you feel the need to do, you can. Honestly, it's not a big deal. For delays, if you get delayed, um, there is a set period of time that they have to give us a, a final response. Otherwise, it goes into what's called open status, and we can release the gun to you either way. Uh, that's a way to protect the buyer so that they can't just deny you gun ownership. Um, gotcha. So, with yeah, that, you that's. Know, Oh, I was just going to say that's something we might not have mentioned before. So you do your permit to purchase, your police chief or your sheriff does the the uh, background check on you then. And then when you come into the store, you also do the instant uh, NICS check. That is correct. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's really good information. So expect delays. I know I haven't personally purchased anything for a while, so I haven't really been there during this really busy time. Yeah, and... Just, just for reference, um, about half of our staff gets delayed, you know. Oh, wow. Um, so that's, it's, it's just the nature of the beast. One of them's the guy that teaches the permit to carry classes, right? So, oh, um, yeah, that's funny. But... Know, yeah, um, it's, it's, not, it's not uncommon. It doesn't mean anything negative. Um, gotcha. It genuinely could just be like early on in this when we had our the, the biggest third. Um, we we actually that we as a industry crashed the the NIC system, um, oh, wow. and after that, after they rebooted it there, um, ev- everything almost guaranteed went delayed just because there were so many people. They were just mm-hmm. pushing them to delay so that way they could go back and actually look at them later. 
Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you for that insight. I appreciate it. All right. So let's go back here. Uh, Now, before we go to our break, uh, where can people go to find more about you guys? So Craig, where can people find you online? Yeah, the easiest place to go online is probably to our website, which is minnesotaccw.com. And we've got all of our classes and information listed there. All right. And Baron, where can we find you? I'm easiest to find at, at the shop at Arms and Arms. Uh, I work, like I said, I work full time there. If you go in while we're open, I'll probably be there. Um, otherwise, you can find me at uh, my Instagram is where I'm most active on social media. Uh, it's just Jewel Labs. Um, otherwise, I, I do have a website. It's jewellabs.org. I mostly just blog there. So if you want to hear my rambling thoughts in text form, you can check me out there too. Excellent. All right. So we've got some questions from the audience. Uh, We are going to go to a quick break here and then we'll get some questions when we get back. The Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus is a single issue, nonpartisan Second Amendment advocacy group. Our mission is to protect and advance the rights of citizens to keep and bear arms. We believe that law abiding citizens should be able to own and use firearms for all lawful purposes, including self-defense, competition, hunting and shooting sports. Please consider becoming a Second Amendment defender with support as low as $5 a month. You can learn more at gunowners.mn slash join. All right, and welcome back. So we've got a couple quick questions. One I want to just put through real quick. That's just a reminder. Uh, if For the permit to purchase, if your police department isn't processing the permits uh quickly enough within the seven day guidelines, contact us at gun owners, uh, sorry, at contact at gun owners.mn. All right. And we've got a couple questions here. Um, one thing to know is that if you, um, if you post a question for us, if it's more than about uh, 250 or 300 characters, it'll get cut off on the screen. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and re- read this one real quick. So Ken says, as a CRSO for a range, the big thing I hear from first-time buyers is the salesperson never told me about getting to learn about my new gun. Range RSOs are not instructors and generally not allowed to teach. So yes, get some training before heading to the range, read and understand the manual, break it down and clean it first, and then head to the range with good eye and ear protection. So yeah, that's... uh, that's definitely good advice. I'm going to kick that off the screen real quick here. Uh, yeah, so we are going to talk in some upcoming episodes about instruction. Um, but do you guys, off the top of your head, have any good resources online that you point people to as far as like gun safety, uh, as far as uh, kind of first steps for new gun owners? Are there any, uh, say, YouTube channels that you like? Sure. I, I mean, I think probably the, the first one is if you're going to go to YouTube for, for gun advice, make sure that the, uh, that the place you're getting it from is, uh, is kind of a reputable source. Um, anybody can put up a YouTube channel, uh, and a lot of people do, and give bad advice. Um, so look for places like the NRA, the United States Concealed Carry Association, um, some type of a group that, that does training, and you can kind of vet that source if they're a, a a certified instructor um, before you go looking for that type of advice. Um, generally speaking, though, any new firearm that you purchase, you can find uh, kind of the basic operation online uh, in reviews and, and things of that nature. It certainly won't teach you to sh- how to shoot the gun, um, but at the same time, it will give you an idea of, of how it works. And our episode on how to find a good instructor and how to vet quality instruction uh, will be on August 5th at 7 p.m. So that's uh, coming up. And uh, Baron, do you have any resources you'd recommend? Um, Or any advice for people to find resources? For, I guess the, the one for like new shooters that I would point people to is, uh, primary and secondary foundations group on Facebook. Um, That group's whole focus is foundational level stuff. So uh, you can absolutely go in there and ask your starter questions um, or go back through all of the posts in there, probably been answered in there somewhere. Um, Otherwise, uh, I'll agree, you know, the, the NRA training program Honestly, is it's a good place to start. If you do their basics of pistol, 
or even if you just go on and read through like what they're, I think they're still teaching three uh, core firearm safety rules. Uh, if you follow those, it that's a great place to start, right? Um, other than that, for finding uh, other resources, it's tough. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> tough to vet uh, who is good. I would say find the people that are most transparent about where their money is coming from. That mm, I'd say is the yeah. easiest one. Right. Yeah, that's good advice. Yeah, and we will be talking about that in a lot more depth. Uh, August 5th is that episode on finding quality instruction. So up next uh, is a question from David. Uh, does the Gun Owners Caucus have a list of recommended attorneys in Minnesota? Uh, we do have a business alliance. Uh, I don't think we actually have a list of attorneys, but I'm going to check right now. Uh, but for Baron and Craig, what do you guys think about concealed carry protection like USCCA? So first of all, what is it? And, uh, and what's your opinion on it? Is it a good idea or not? Baron, do you want to lead that one off? <laughs> Crap, I was going to pass. <laughs> I don't have an intelligent opinion. I'll be straight up. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure. I, I think it's a good idea, yes. Um, as far as who, though, I that that's the part where I don't, you know, I can't go recommending any, any one organization. Sure. Yeah, and, and I would say, you know, from a, from a, uh, insurance perspective, um, kind of what you, you need to look at is is your risk, um, and and that's probably the first piece of it. Um, so if if you are a person who uh, who carries every day, um, that might be something to to look into. Um, if you look into uh, concealed carry insurance, um, you know there's there's different forms of it, just like there's different forms of insurance. Um, some of them are more of a pooled risk um, in terms of your you're basically paying in and the uh, the company says that if you know anybody uh, uses their firearm to defend themselves that they'll back that up um, like a lot of insurances if, if you're grossly negligent they're not going to cover that um, so in those cases you know it's not something that I personally use but I know a lot of people feel comfortable having it um, like with uh, your car insurance make sure that you're going to a reputable company um, that's well known and uh, and has some backing um, at the same time, I don't know that those types of insurances are held to the same standard that car insurance or home insurance would be. Gotcha. Yeah, that's good advice. And I think for most people uh, just watching these these early initial steps, that's going to be a little further down the road, and it might not be something you need to worry about just yet. Um, but it is a good idea for future episodes, so we will definitely keep that in mind. All right. So thank you guys so much for talking to us today. Uh, is there anything that you would like to say that you didn't get to? I think the, the only thing I'd say is there's, you know, there's a lot of new gun owners. Some of the people listening may be new gun owners. Um, some people may be longtime gun owners. Um, from that perspective, understand that with anything that new people come into, be as welcoming as possible. And if you're new, Generally speaking, gun owners are one of the friendly, friendliest groups. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions, uh, whether you're at the range um, and it's to a complete stranger or somebody that works at the range or at, uh, at the gun shop. Because really within this group, uh, we all kind of have a, a common goal of firearms ownership and we want to make sure that everybody does it in the safest uh, and most responsible way possible. Excellent, thank you. And Baron, anything you wanted to get to? I just echo that. Um, don't don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, yeah, may, maybe. I hope not, but you might run into somebody where they they are a bit dismissive because to them it's a very simple question. Um, it doesn't mean it's a dumb question, right? There's not much else we do in our lives for most people that's like gun ownership. Um, you know, where you have a, a dangerous tool or a potentially dangerous tool. Um, qu questions are good, right? Learning is good. Don't don't be afraid to ask. Um, having the answer is better than being unsafe. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I've, I've also found people to be very welcoming in the gun community. And a lot of times if you stop to ask somebody a question, like say you ask a question about their gun, they'll say, oh, here, do you want to try it? And they'll show you how it works. And, you know, people are generally very happy to share. Um, so it's, it's definitely worth at least, uh, reaching out to people who kind of 
could help you. All right. Oh, did you have something else? And Sarah, uh, just, yeah, just one other thing. I, I mentioned it because I've gotten the question a lot in the past few months. Um, for people who, who are new to buying a gun um, or for people who are getting a gun as a gift uh, to help in their self-protection, um, Minnesota does not have a gun registration database. Um, so if, if you buy a gun or if you get a gun as a gift, you don't have to go to your police department and register that firearm. You do in some states. Minnesota is not one of those states. Um, so I, I know some people have said, oh, you know, my, my father, my grandfather gave me this, this shotgun for home defense because of what's going on. Um, and they taught me how to use it, but I'm afraid that it's illegal because it's not registered to me. Um, there is no registration process. Even the paperwork that Baron talked about filling out for your background check, um, it legally is not allowed to be used in a, a database of, of gun ownership. That form actually doesn't even leave our store. Um, that's all stored on site. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys, for talking to us today. And thanks to everyone who posted questions and discussion. So next week on Caucus Live, we're going to be doing a deep dive on gun safety and secure storage, including storing firearms in homes with children. Our expert guest next week will be Michael Treat from Condition Orange Preparedness. That's coming up on Wednesday, July 22nd at 7 p.m. So keep an eye on the Minnesota's Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus Facebook page for more details. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you'd like to help us out, please share the show with your friends and family. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've had a ton of friends and coworkers lately ask me how to get into guns, and we're hoping this show will be a great resource for them. Thanks again, and good night. <laughs>